How do you feel about prosthetics and like massive hair and makeup transformations? There are those moments during preparation, during rehearsal where you're like, oh, this is never gonna work. <laughs> right. You call the director and you're like, I'm sorry, you're, you're gonna have to fire me because I, I'm gonna ruin your movie. <laughs> Hi. Thank you for coming. Thank you for being here. I'm glad I yep. didn't show up and you weren't sitting here. Oh. That would have been awkward. I thought about that. You did? As a joke, and then I thought yeah. that would be mean because you don't know me at all. And I didn't want to jump off the wrong foot. I have a question for yeah, you. Yeah, please, please. Do you like talking about your work? Uh, no, not okay, at all. Okay, so here we go. Yeah, okay, here cool, we are right. talking. Uh, what about <laughs> you? You like talking about your um, it, I guess it depends on the on the work. But I do like to talk about other people's work. I, I like to hear about it too. Yeah, same. That's why you I know. think, I mean, I just have a lot of questions and I know that it's supposed to be even. I just have a well, lot I of questions. Well, I hope it's not. I hope we hear a lot more about you and, and your work than we well, do mine. But let's, it's because I'm more fa more interested to hear about it than, same. than yeah. Same. Because I had my experience and I want to know yours. Yeah. Which is why these are kind of We could just funky. end it right now. Yeah, know? we can talk. I mean. Go for a walk and it's a beautiful day it's out. It's a beautiful day. It's 70 yeah. degrees. Um, but can we talk? Get just, a little green juice. I got to know the thing that connects us yeah, um, yeah. is that you gave Elizabeth Holmes a Woman of the Year award, and yeah. I just want to know what that was like. It was interesting. I had heard her speak before that on the stage. She was, you know, incredibly smart, and then I met her after that. I, I liked her a lot. Yeah. She was really uh, sweet, really kind, and you know, no indication that things weren't great in her life and at the company. And and then I did, I gave her uh, an award. How did that happen? What a small world. It's such a and small now I'm world. Here with you. And I, it's just, I, I listen. I as an actor, I'm like, I care about my character. Yeah. I'm there with her. Sure. As much as I can be as an actor outside of her world, having nothing to do with her, I'm kind of in awe of anyone who's spend time with her because she will always be very far removed from me because we were not allowed to meet. Yeah, I kind of had a similar situation where really? I wasn't allowed to meet, but I did anyway. Oh my God, so, I, okay, you know, so maybe you but, did but it Anyway, back to Elizabeth, right? you know, I, right. I, we stayed in touch after that and talked a few times, but my experience with her was always quite uh, nice and right. lovely. And that's what I think what's interesting about bringing a character to life, you know, not, not, every, not every one is one thing. No one is one thing, right? right? Exactly, especially um, the villains that we create, um, or, they, or we help create. Yeah. And I, I think it's incredible that you- Did you want to meet her? Yeah, I did, of, of course I, yeah. I did. I mean, I, did she contact you? No, no we weren't no. allowed to. She was in litigation, and oh. Disney was like very clear about what we could and could not put in the show. Got and it. I wasn't privy to any of that because I didn't come on until the last minute, yeah. really. They just, Kate McKinnon stepped out, and then they were looking for somebody else. So. I was never gonna meet her, wow. but it was always a dream that maybe we would down the line. Of course, she's still waiting sentencing, but it is. Um, it, it would be, I think, maybe a, a mistake at this point, and I think it would have been a mistake for me to have met her before I played her because of my own issues with just in life. Well, it's just a company. It's not who I am. Of course it's who you are. What do you mean? You can't stop. Who told you that you couldn't meet Adam Newman? I think the question was floated around early on and I didn't get a definitive response from one person, but I think like the blanket approach that they were taking was that the, the Newmans weren't involved with our project. It was a piece that you know celebrated their successes, but also some of their the biggest failures as well in their lives. But I never said, hey, I wanna go and meet Adam, can I please do that? And then someone said, no, it wasn't really like that. But I okay. understood that the consensus was it's church and state here, but uh, I was too curious. I thought that I would regret it if I didn't uh, meet Adam and um, that there was more to be gained than lost. I am many things. Immigrant, entrepreneur, husband, father, disruptor, maverick, creator, and founder and CEO of The Week Company. And do you yeah. keep in touch with him? We had a top secret meeting. Like nobody knew that it was happening. It was right before shooting and it was kind of touch and go, like, you know, about where it was gonna happen. Of course, it was during, uh, you know, kind of 
prime COVID days. But anyway, we, we ended up find, just finding this little window of opportunity. And I went down and I met him, I met his wife, wow. uh, Rebecca, and I met all other kids. And they have a lovely family, and you know it was it was quite quite a nice experience on on my end, I, which I think it only enhanced your performance and your relationship to. It, it. certainly was wasn't hurtful. It was right. I had already done a lot of the work that needed to be done, and I didn't meet him, and all of a sudden change direction. And I think that's one of the things that's fascinating about doing these kind of roles that are so recent and relevant is you're just buried in information. I mean, you probably had countless hours of video and depositions and all of this stuff, well, right? The de yeah, that's the one thing that I, I'm i sure I would have gotten there, but the deposition tapes, because they were static yeah, and fully like immersive for me. Like I, I just saw every thought she had. She couldn't hide from anybody. Elizabeth just was stuck in this box of information and legal trouble. And that was so insightful, not probably as insightful as well, in some ways better than meeting her because I felt responsible, but only so far. I think it would have been hard for me to play the stuff that was harder to play by the end when she was really making some bad decisions, having been connected to her in that way. In the, you know, so who knows? What, um, what would you say to her if you ran into her in New York? Hi. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Hello. It's so good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm so... I'm a, uh, I would want to spend more time with her and know that I probably shouldn't um, because, you know, I've, I've, I have in some way affected her uh, legal experience because right now Sunny Balwani's in court and it's all quiet because the, the jury had, had watched the show. Mm. And her sentencing may or may not de depend on Sunny's sentencing. And so it's very messy. You're a supernova. It's such a relief to know that Adam Newman, Adam and Rebecca Newman are somewhat disconnected, right? Like from the world in a way. Yeah. From an audience standpoint, they almost seem like they're protected in a bubble. Am I wrong? They have each other. And yeah. they have the thing that I really admired about them is they have uh, they really have a deep, true love and they have a connection that's incredible. That's kind of an enviable thing for, for so many of us. Yeah. But uh, I happen to like Adam quite a bit. And, you know, we, we like I said before, we examine his greatest successes and also his greatest failures. And, you know, I, I told Adam, I said, look, I would this is never going to be you. It's never going to be your life. It's not going to be her life. And just don't watch it, you know? Yeah. And who knows? You think she's watched uh, the show? I know that Elizabeth was told not to watch it, but I I cannot imagine a world where she didn't peek. Just take a little peek. And what about Adam Newman? I'm sure he peeked. He, he's, probably, he's probably, I mean, you guys had already met, so I'm sure yeah. he's, I'm sure you... Would, did you guys approach it where you said, okay, this is, was there a conversation about her being, quote unquote, the villain uh, of the story, the antagonist. Like, what what was the what were the conversations like around that? This show is just about uh, seeing a new perspective. There's no point unless you're going to get inside this person. I mean, we've seen enough Elizabeth Holmes stories, and they're all nonfiction, and they're just very informative. But she's an enigma for a reason. She's a mystery for a reason, and so the only reason we could make this show is if we did something different, which was maybe try to address why she made the decision she made and maybe where she came from, which is why we started back when she's, I don't know, 11 or 12, and then quickly switched to 17, which is when I came in, and gave some backstory because, uh, you know, you were never going to know anything more. She wasn't going to give it. To, yeah. She wasn't going to share. So... It was never about her being a villain. It was it was actually let's make this person three dimensional like we are and try to give the audience something to to understand. I mean, how cool <laughs> in some in some respects, how great that the audience is now considering her in a different way. She's not just one thing. Person who put people's lives in jeopardy and lied her ass off to 
to become powerful. There was more to her than that. And um, that was always the game plan. Like, let's relate to her. Okay, well, we can. And Liz Merriweather, the showrunner, I almost thought for, for a minute that she was like a little too close to the story, but then that's what you kind of want. Why is that? What do you mean? Because the first conversation we had, I didn't say sociopath, but somebody, some one of the you know people in the creative team were like, I mean, she's a sociopath. And Liz is like, no, she's not. And I was like, nobody knows anything. Nobody's diagnosing her. That's not at all what we do and the point. We should never diagnose them. We're not, you know, her doctor, but... Um, I thought it was really am amazing that she was like, no, she's not. And it was just for the sake of the show, for the sake of her relationship to the person, the character at the middle of the story, for the sake of everything, like, the th no. And that opened everything. She's a human being. She's complicated. We like to play complicated human beings because I don't know about you, but I grew up learning about myself through people and film and television, characters, whether they were real people or not. That's what we were there to do. And I just thought that Liz was really strong about that. What? I'm doing my job. I, my job is to, to have a vision and to bring in investors and make those investors happy. Are you still in touch with Elizabeth? Uh, no. <laughs> you said... Uh, you want to pass your number along or something? No, 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 no. It's not the time. What I, better time than the present? I know. I do. I no, actually I, do I, care. I, I, I haven't spoken to her in some time, but I know that she has a, a baby and yeah. a, 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 but, a new partner in, that's in a life. Whole other thing. And isn't that wild? It's great. But it, wasn't that a way for you to connect to Adam, Adam and Rebecca? It was. It's. It's one of the contradictions that are out there, and I think that's what's fascinating. Is people, you know, uh, someone makes a, a bad decision, they think their entire life is full of bad decisions, and it's not. Frequently, it's not. Yeah. But um, no, I mean, I th it, for for me, the, the and I think that's one of the reasons we we focused on the relationship and our our piece because it was so powerful, it was so important. They were so important to each other, and the story is so dependent on both of them. Look at me. Three hundred eighty million. Look at me. Look at me. <sighs> Fear is a choice. You know, the first time that we met he was very vocal about how she was absolutely instrumental in the success of the company and you know of himself and yeah, it's a wild thing playing characters that, and stories that are so recent you know there's there's a little bit less um, you know time and distance there so I, I i did feel some kind of obligation to be respectful of the family of their love of each other of of him as well, and 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 to do my best to to understand the the nuances there. Yeah. Do what do you how do you think you're gonna feel when she's uh, sentenced? Is that that's a wild thing to think about, huh? I have thought a lot about the sentencing. Now that I know when it is, and I spent a lot of time with people who have spent a lot of time on this. Yeah. Because the dropout was a podcast, and it, this is based on the podcast. So the the producers of the podcast. Have, are just so buried in it. But I, I honestly think that Liz Merriweather and I are <laughs> in our own boat. Um, not to say we're Team Elizabeth, but tried to figure her out in a way from such a place of compassion and worthiness. Like she's worthy of that. We all are. Um, we all have should have a voice, especially you know when you only see one dimension of somebody. And I, I also know that there are some victims of her crimes, which are now consider crimes, she's been convicted. I also know that like whatever she'll be sentenced to, she's, it's what she deserves. And, and I also know that in my gut um, that she has, there's a space for her outside of this whole Theranos thing, outside of prison, if she goes to prison, if she goes, she'll, you know, she'll, she'll, she'll spend her time there and then she'll get out and she'll create something or invent something new that will work. I don't know if I'm the only person that feels that way, but it f feels like there are a few of us, and I, I'd love to see her take responsibility in a very vocal way, which she has not. So she hasn't, why. after all this time, um, agreed with the assessment of... Not from what I've seen. Hmm. And that bothers me about people if hmm. they've... Yeah. I, I like accountability is everything. And yeah. If she can just take the down and then move on, do whatever great thing she's gonna do, which I believe, I really, yeah, she lied a lot. Um, tr I hope she tries not to lie and then, you know, thinks of something great. And she's a mother. She has her whole life ahead of her. 
Yeah. She's my age. I'd like to think I'm still young. <laughs> you know what I mean? She's got a... You so, are. Right? I mean... <laughs> uh, yeah. I could give you my version of how we got there, but that is the past. And I am more interested in the future. So come with me. How long did it take for you to feel confident with the accent, the voice, everything? Well, I come from Rome and uh, I was doing House of Gucci and really pretty strong accent, Italian accent. And, uh, and then I went right to New York and a few weeks later we were shooting. So I had very little time. Like it sounds like you had very little time. Wait. Uh, as well. How, how, how did, what? Yeah. You, three weeks between? Basically, I think three weeks, yeah, something like what? that. What? Oh my I God. Think, yeah. <laughs> I don't understand Italian. They're just so different, those accents. Yeah, they sound very different. And then strangely, they have a lot of common um, sounds, which is was was pretty tough. Like the hard D? You know, they, they, they don't share an R, but they share a lot of other sounds. You know, uh, which I never realized that that they, they had some similarities. But anyway, I had a great team. I actually tried to go straight to Israel to Tel Aviv, and I couldn't get in because of COVID. Um, oh, okay. And the court, they, 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 the flights were all shut down at that time, as if you weren't uh, an Israeli national. Oh. So I just dove in as deep as I could. I surrounded myself with a team of Israelis, and uh, I had. Um, a, a, a great actor, a woman named Netta as well, in Israel, and we would Zoom every day. And uh, But I had the voices around me, is, so that helped a lot. Like it goes in your muscles almost, yeah. right? Yeah, When you I hear think it so. enough? Yeah, I think so. It just becomes habit. It's really just retraining your your mouth to make certain shapes. But fortunately, it wasn't as big of a, ch like, not, not challenge, but I, I, I was really worried that I was going to keep slipping into Italian, and I yeah. think it's a testament to how strong the character was um, that it, it was that part that wasn't the hard part um, of course the time was was challenging but uh, I had a great team and you know we had lots of uh, lots of hummus and falafel and that helped always helped were they always with you on set I did have at least some of them around all of the time to always hear it yeah to always hear it Okay, and you'd be like, how was that? Well, once we got up, I tried to do most of the how was that before. Right, okay. Um, and, you know, of, of course, as you go and you get, every time we had a new script and new material, I would get and go over every word. Uh, and we would also would try to add sayings and words and idiosyncrasies. And, of course, it wasn't just an Israeli accent. It was Adam's accent. Right, which and very Adam, different. he doesn't have a straight Israeli accent. Well, he lived in America for a short while when he was young. So um, his it, it, it's not the prototypical Israeli accent. Like he pronounces his R's in an American, with an American accent okay. and things like that. Yeah. Uh, and he just has a very unique way of talking, quite an energetic, passionate way of talking. I'm sure you, you were too, but I, at the end of every day, I just was dead. Did you from, have a hard time not speaking like him when you were done with the show? Oh, I still do some things, you know, yeah. that I did uh, when we were shooting. Like I always say, bye, 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 bye. You know, I'm <laughs> yeah. always saying that. Did you uh, catch yourself and you're like, oh. yeah. And then you're like, man, that's kind of, yeah. it's kind of yours now. I mean, I think it's, okay. it's natural for it to take a little bit of time. You know, you make a commitment to anything. And yeah. I, 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 I've noticed a lot too when I make a physical commitment, whether I've gained weight or lost weight, you know, when you make that commitment for, you know, or a character commitment for a certain amount of time. It's it's reasonable that it's going to take a, a little time to wash away, and I think that's appropriate, and that's that's okay. Is this the longest you've ever had a character in the, yeah. in the recent years? Yeah, it was the longest, and it was the most amount of material I've ever had in my so life. So much material. Right? <laughs> yeah. And believe it. Yeah, I, I, selfishly, I loved it. I mean, oh, I was like, yeah. I, I really there wasn't a day on set, no matter how burnt I was that I wasn't really happy Same. and grateful to be there. I thought, God, what a, what a what? amazing These are, uh, This was the best, uh, hands down, beyond anything I've ever done, any location I've been ever been in, this was the most fulfilling job, even better than stage. Like I, I cannot believe how 
hard it was to, like I still do things that are very Elizabeth and I catch myself doing it and I'm like, so what? You know, I just, I really, it was so long <laughs> and I loved every second of it. And I never get to do that. I mean, you get to yeah. play characters yeah. often that you can just leave yourself. You're so lucky. <laughs> I want to do that. No, um, I did, I got to do it, but. Yeah. It's interesting that's the longest because we don't do we didn't we don't do television. You did it a long time ago. I did it a long time ago, yeah. but like we have like two months. I mean, when characters. I did television too, I barely spoke in the project that I did. In oh, in my so-called life, you okay. were yeah. very young and didn't speak much. I was a kid. Much. I was a kid. I was twenty-two, something like that. But that's the only TV show. Yeah, that's the. Uh, I mean, I don't know about you, but I it never felt any different than any film I've ever made. I didn't feel any difference uh, in the process and. Um, right, process is similar. Yeah, I, I really didn't feel any different. And the thing that's been really fun about it is people discovering the episodes week after week, isn't I know, that? I know. Kind of a, uh, a, a unique pleasure, right? It creates a space. Yeah. In the world of streaming, which is brilliant and also has a lot of disadvantages, but it, it's just, it's tricky because things get lost so easily. And it's nice when you work so hard on a character <laughs> to spend a little bit more time with that character. Yeah. I mean, usually they're like, you know, ripping me off the set and they're like, no, we're done now. And I'm like, but wait, one more. Uh, so that's great because you do the same amount of work, whether you're working two days or 200, uh, you know, you do the same amount of prep, I should right, say, right. with character. Right, I had a lot of prep. Yeah, how more much than, time way did more you than have? Three, I had like three months. Oh, that's nice. That's great. Were you thinking, oh, what? should have been better? I'm kidding. No, no, I'm you kidding, were fantastic. No, no, thanks. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, I, I had a lot of time. Like it was luxury. <laughs> you had three, I'm shocked by the three week prep yeah, you had. There's something beautiful about that kind of mad dash to the starting line like that, you know? And uh, yeah. there was just so much material. I, I remember like you, I had a piece, I had some video footage that was about 12 hours long. It wasn't a deposition, but it was similar. And I looked for all the broken bits. You know, I watched the whole thing, but then you know, look at the part where he's on the mic, but he leans off camera to say something to someone. The, the parts between that were real and broken and uh, full of, you know, humanity. Those were great. Those were great. And I talked to a lot of people that, that knew mm -hmm. him, worked with him. And it was fascinating. You know, even the people that m maybe weren't so happy about the experience they had, they, they generally always gave him credit and respect for the things that he did do well. I thought that was pretty, that was pretty interesting. Wade, we care deeply about our partnership and we're anxious to put our best foot forward. And what's the timeline for, we are anxious to put our best foot forward? Tell me about the voice and how did you, how, how soon did you start digging in? Because it's a great voice that uh, Elizabeth I, has. I committed to the fact, I was very committed to the fact that I was never gonna get it exactly right and that it was okay because it was my version, but it was the most fun, it's, it's not an accent, it's an, but it's not an affectation either. It's, it's somewhere in the middle. She has, a, it's about the space and whatever the shape of my mouth takes when I'm speaking like her deepens my voice a little bit. I speak much higher, a little bit above average for a female. She speaks in her deepest, speaks like at 189, which is 230 is like the, I don't know what measuring the device it, you, you use to measure decibels of frequency, I don't know. Um, no idea, but it's very deep and I do have to be transparent about the fact that some of, few, but some of the, um, her speaking when it's very deep was ADR, it was sound after the fact because I had coughed a lot because I had COVID, you well, know, that's a, a beautiful thing. I mean, you know, there, there are many performances out there that have been, you know, I mean, uh, Marlon Brando was infamous for looping almost everything that he did in the later years. I mean, that's a whole other art in itself. Yeah. Looping that, yeah. that kind of, when you have that physical performance, trying to match that with something more enhanced even. It's like yeah. the timing, but also the energy and, and the, the intention behind everything. It's, it's, um, well, it's a tool just like the light is right. or just like the microphone is. The and voice. Yeah. How do you feel about prosthetics and like massive 
hair and makeup transformations? I mean, it's a tool. Um, if it calls, if the character calls for, I'm of the kind of thinking that, you know, you just follow the character and you do what's needed to deliver. Do you feel like it's ever gotten in your way? I've never had an experience where it got in my way because I think I would stop beforehand. Right. But there are those moments during preparation, during rehearsal, where you're like, oh, this is never going to work. Right. You call the director and you're like, I'm sorry, you're, you're going to have to fire me because I, I'm going to ruin your movie. Uh, but there, there, there. That's the pro, That's part of it, you know. It's just, just the trial and error, and Ugh. you know, we found it was really hard to do subtle, you know, something and, and something more close to to me, you know. Uh, even having the contact lenses, we must have gone through ten different pair because wow. when you yeah. brown, you've probably done this. It, <sighs> You, you need to find the right tone, and, and maybe his eyes are darker, but then they look dead on camera because it's plastic, yeah. it's not a real eye. It's always a negotiation. Oh, God. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You have, like, searing blue eyes. But you have searing blue green eyes. Green eyes. Are they blue? Green. Why does everybody call me blue? I've well, got... because they're blue. They're green. Are they? My eyes are Hold green on. on my license. Okay, wow. Um, well, then it must be true. Crazy about the... I. You know what? I do have to give you serious props for... Hold on, let me look. Yeah. Them. You know what? I think you're right. They are. No, you, I'm, of course you know I, you're I know, blue. I know. I'm Hold right. Hold on, let um, me see something. Yeah, they're yeah, green. Yeah, they're green. Wow. It's a lot to wear contacts for that long. It is. You know, I learned to put them, take them, I mean, this is no big feat, but I learned to do it myself because of my, for yeah. some reason my eyes are really hard to get them in and out of. Uh, Same. Really? I, w I wouldn't want to. Which I, is I, weird because you have very large eyes. And my eyes are oh. pretty large, too. You would think the larger the eye, the easier the contact. No. Maybe it's because they pop right out or something. One of my very recent co-stars had to, <laughs> had to have the uh, makeup department put them in, take them out every day. Anything that you wish you could have had a chance to do with the character, but you didn't? A musician. No, I mean with, with, uh... Oh. Elizabeth. Oh, with Elizabeth? Yeah. I'm not gonna, I, I don't even open the door to regrets. Yeah. Because that would, that would keep me up at night. No, no wait, why? Do you have a, do you no, think I, I just, should No, I remember <laughs> in, in, like, in House of Gucci, there was a scene where the entire family had a board meeting. And Paolo was so tired of the family saying one thing and then doing another and lying that he brought a tape recorder to the meeting. And he, this is, of course, back in the day. And he opened up his briefcase and, you know, with great flair, he pushed record. He put the tape recorder on the table and said, now we have a witness. And the family beat the shit out of him, like beat him up with his own dick. He left a bloody mess. He went to the hospital. He launched a lawsuit. And I just thought what an incredible scene that would have been had in the movie. I no regret, but I just it would have been fun. That's where I was wondering if there was anything that, that you uh, that Oh, you no, we, we actually heard a story about a Birkin bag. Um, and even though it was in the cutting room floor, we, uh, we heard it from somebody, from a very reliable source, that she had like, thrown her Birkin bag on John McCain's dining room table and just left. Really, really wanted to add that in, and she had apparently like a baby bird that she was a keeping baby at bird. home with Sunny, unless it was a euphemism for something. But they had written about a baby bird in their text messages. Didn't have enough money for a baby bird. Lots of things. I would have liked to see more of her dog. It was nice to see the dog at the end. Yeah. Thank you for showing up today. Thanks, same. Thanks for being it. in New York. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. Bye, 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 b